Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu. In this video, I'll explain you a bit more about the process of skinning carbon fiber parts. So it's real carbon fiber, so it's not wrapped, it's not a vinyl, so it's real carbon fiber. And we'll be wrapping a filter box for a motorcycle in real carbon fiber here. So we'll be using a base coat, applying the carbon fiber on top of it, and then build up some thickness to sand it and finish it up with some sanding. I like to mention uh, some things in this video might seem easy. If you're starting with composites, this is a good way to start. It's slow entry, so you don't need a vacuum pump, so you just need resins, some sanding paper, some brushes, some epoxy resin. Um, so it's very basic entry. But keep in mind that it might be a bit more difficult than you see in this video if you're doing it yourself. So if you want to stay up to date of my projects, uh, Follow me on Instagram, you can find some pictures of projects in between. And now we'll start with this uh, tutorial. So first we degrease the part, then we're going to sand a bit. We want to create a good mechanical bond, so we're not counting on a chemical bond here. Um, if at some point you think you like this video, make sure to subscribe and leave a like. Uh, a comment is appreciated as well. We're close to 100k subscribers, so it would help me a lot. So the part was sanded, then we're going to degrease it again. The thing we want to avoid is to sand any dirt or grease into the part while sanding it. If I'm correct, this is an ABS part, so it's good to have a good chemical bond as well. Plastic have other expansion rates than carbon fiber, and resins so sometimes it's possible over time and especially when heated the parts might delaminate so it's very important to make some deep scratches so that the resin will go into the scratches and the surface finish and keep everything tightly against the parts over time so here I'm just making some scratches with a knife uh, to improve the mechanical bonds uh, on here so I did a lot of skinning throughout the years and developed a bit of my own workflow or my technique so I call it the 112233 technique so we're starting with one layer of a base coat in this case the part is black so we can start with a regular epoxy laminating resin easy composites also has a base coat it's black so it's better if you're having gray parts or white parts to use the black base coats or tint the epoxy resin in black because sometimes you might have some see-through uh, through the carbon fiber weave and if you have some white under it it will be visible so i applied the first layer and then we're aiming for a tacky stage so not fully cured it's very important to get into that stage because now we can stick the plies of carbon fiber on top of the part using the stickiness of the resin. So tacky is the point where you put your glove on it. It doesn't stick on the glove, but leaves a small print uh, into the resin. So make sure to align the weave well. I did some mistakes in the past, so make sure to double check it. Prepare everything in advance, put it on the table so you don't have to think while applying it. And then we're just trimming all the excess. Um, if you're trying this, make the plies a bit bigger than the part because sometimes you might misalign it while putting it on so you don't have edges where there's no carbon fiber. So what I'm doing here is I'm heating the carbon fiber and especially the resin under it. Uh, so we were at a tacky stage and what we're doing now is using the post cure or the TG of resins. I could make a special video about this but by heating the epoxy resin at a higher temperature then we laid it down we can make it soft again so we're using this to stick the carbon fiber well on top of the part so for the second step so we're adding one layer of XCR so it's a resin from easy composites specially developed for skinning parts so it has a purple color so it's uh, I think it's because of the UV uh, resistant materials that are added into the resin as well and then I'm just applying the resin on top. So you don't need a lot of resin. Um, I think this should be about 70 grams or something. Uh, and then you just brush it on. Do not pour it on top. Um, here we're just aiming for a small like layer of epoxy to saturate the carbon fiber and make a good bond that we had with the first layer. So I'm pushing everything nicely through the fibers and hope for a full saturation. 
If we're good with timing, um, if you're in the tacky stage, again, you can just trim the one layer of carbon fiber with a standing knife and proceed to the next steps. So what we're doing now is adding some thickness. So we're going to build up some thickness by using the XCR resin again. We'll be adding two layers. So we're aiming for a full coverage as flat and even as possible. It won't be possible in these first layers. As you can see, the resin is still not fully um, filling all the little gaps in between the alignment of the fibers but we're aiming to get it as good as possible. A thing I see a lot on the internet is people pouring resin on top. Uh, for me, it's not the way to go. Uh, you're adding a lot of thickness, but also drips and bubbles in between your layers. I like to apply thin layers evenly as many times as needed. So mostly with four layers, you will be good uh, for clear coats and finishing the part. So here I'm removing the tape, so it's to protect the rest of the parts and we can proceed with some sanding uh, after that. So here you can see it, it's still like a fishy look. <laughs> it's like a wet fish, uh, but we'll even everything out now by sanding. So by having build up some thickness, we're just sanding through the epoxy. So it's very important not to sand through the carbon fiber here. Um, because it will leave some marks. So compared to regular Bondo, you can just sand through it and you have the, me the metal uh, visible from under it and then you can apply it again at a primer. But here we're just adding interior, it's transparent Bondo. And if you sand through the fibers, you'll get some ugly spots into your part. So it's very important not to sand through it. So everything was sanded, then degreased again. Very important to avoid fish eyes mostly in the pinholes you might have some fish eyeing or not like going all the way into the pinholes and now again just applying thin coats now you get some good results after the sanding so it's starting to get like a good glossy part now and applying it two times again uh, taking good care i'm using a light against the part to see some fish eyeing or some small defects and applying a bit more resin on top of that if needed. So now we're going to proceed with the sanding again. We can go uh, a bit lower in grit. So it's a, a finer sanding paper now. I started with 320, I think, uh, because we're just aiming to get through the high and the low spots now of the epoxy resin, and everything should be flat uh, after that. So now it's also the time to drill the holes. We're not going to apply more resin, so I mostly do the drilling of the holes at the end because otherwise the resin might go through the holes into your part. So that's why I'm mostly doing it at the end. And now it's time for three layers of clear coat. So main goal of the clear coat now is just adding a thick layer to remove small pinholes, scratches from sanding. Uh, this is not a stage that you need to do if you still have some big defects or low and ho high spots <laughs> into the resin. So you can see I'm not a professional spray painter, so um, I'm managing just well. We still have some orange peel. I did. I went a bit too heavy, uh, so these are the runners that you see. But it's not a big problem because I know I'm going to sand it again. And then we'll get to the better results. So here you can see it. Still some little defects. It's not fully mirror finished now. The advantage is clear coat is easy to sand. So we can start with a 600 and then we'll proceed with a 1000 grit before finishing the part. Um, at some points you could also polish it, but make sure not to go through the clear coat that you added, otherwise you'll have some marks as well. So here I'm applying the last layer. So this is a matte finish. I could also go for a gloss and applying three coats depending on the manufacture, manufacturing data that you have from the products. Mostly they will say two. I like to apply three thin layers, but it all depends on the clear coat that you're using. So now we're able to mount the parts back into the bracket and ship it to the customer. So why matte finish is good, especially on dirt bikes with sand and abrasion, it will leave less visible marks if you have some scratches and on um, high gloss finishes. So I personally like it. Let me know if you prefer matte or gloss um, in the comments down below. 
and make sure to follow and subscribe for future projects because like I've mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial, we'll have some more videos about motorcycle parts with different production techniques. We'll go through some forged again. I've recently uploaded the video, but I made some improvements on that. Um, and then we'll go to pre prep and split molds as well for the, uh, I think these are brake ducts. So make sure to subscribe, follow, comment down below and see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.